Good morning, everyone. This is Chris. I come back at you with yet another Let's Try. And today on the docket, we're raiding the snack aisle of not Walmart, not Hy-Vee, but a new challenger who comes toward us. Today, we're invading the sacred halls of the holy and, um, uh, questionably named... But ba da ba Come and go. Now let's all be adults here. Yes, the name is very silly. Uh, in a, in, in, in it has a very, uh, not safe for work insinuation to it. And we're not just trying a uh, snack food, we're actually gonna be trying something hot. Behold, the Smoked Brisket Breakfast Burrito. Good lord. Six dollars for this thing, too. Well, let's give her a try. I grew up with Come and Go. Uh, there was one in Glenwood right at the turnoff from Locust on to Sharp Street. Uh, before the town square. And, um, we would go there occasionally. I remember when I was in high school, the, uh, the cheerleaders painted the whole town with different, like, every year the, the glee club or whoever would paint the town with all various f slogans and stuff. And one year they made a bit of a faux pas. They painted on the come and go, make the titans come and go. And, needless to say, that was not taken in the most mature way by everyone. So, come and, the, the, the people of Come and Go took it down and replaced it with a more, you know, with a more uh, innocent saying, or innocuous phrase. Which, it's sad, because, like, well, one, it's, like, it's not, like... It's, it's clearly not supposed to be sexual. Like, for one, it's not even spelled with a C. It's spelled with a K. Granted, it is spelled... Uh, the other... It is the three... It is a three-letter spelling like the sexual form. But, you know, it, it was meant to be like, you know, oh, yeah, you get your things and you get out quick. This year, uh, the, the people who bought Come and Go, Maverick, are rebranding the stores nationwide. Sad to see them go. Uh, there's a joke you made there, but uh, anyway, let's give her a try. Mmm. Oh, it's got barbecue sauce. Mmm. I'm going to perch the hat on because even at the loosest setting, it's a little tight. Let's try some of this brisket. Look at that. That looks pretty, pretty good, actually. Mmm. I'll be darned, this gas station breakfast burrito actually tastes pretty decent. Like, again, not a big eggs person. <sighs> Excuse me. Especially not fast food eggs. But. The taste is covered up by the barbecue sauce. And the texture is covered up by the brisket and potatoes. And of course, this was all prepared in a microwave, but I don't mind. Some of the best... Like, typically if you go to Red Lobster or whatever, most of the stuff you're getting has been... is just microwaved. Like, that's the secret to, um... It's a secret to uh, Olive Garden's um, mm. 
Hello Gardens lasagna. They make it in the morning, then they separate it into pieces and refrigerate it until you ask for it. Then they, like, either, I think they nuke it and then throw it under the broiler to melt the cheese a little more and give it a nice toast. The brisket is a little dry when you get a pocket of it that's just brisket without much barbecue sauce. But, legitimately, this is a good breakfast burrito. This might be the best breakfast burrito I've had since Taco John's used to have the, uh, best fast food, well, the fast food, fast food adjacent, adjacent breakfast burrito I've had since Taco John's had the chicken and gravy burrito. Which was a breakfast burrito with fried chicken and white gravy. It was delicious. And barbecue sauce is a very unique choice for eggs. Hmm. Because, like, you put ketchup in eggs, and barbecue sauce is like ketchup plus. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Anyway, we do have a few more things to round this out a little bit. We have Sweet and Spicy Honey Blaze and Baja Point Break Punch. I tried the Laguna Lemonade. Now we're going to be trying the Point Break. First, let's delve into the Lay's. This isn't the first time I've had spicy honey on the channel. Um, I tried that spicy honey pizza for Valentine's Day. It was terrible. Honestly, I'm just glad to be over the food poisoning, though. Hmm. There's a light honey taste, but it's faint. It's just a sweet, spicy lay, though. Very similar to their barbecue chip. Hmm. Ah. And the Point Break Punch. Artificial Tropical Punch flavor, okay. So this is going to be Hawaiian Punch, basically. <clears throat> yeah, that's Hawaiian Punch. <clears throat> that is like syrup. And it doesn't taste super good with the spicy sweet honey. Again, like, maybe I shouldn't have had those back-to-back, -back because the spicy sweet honey is... Sugar, like, soda is one of the worst things you can drink after eating something spicy, because, like, it, it just... The flavors clash too much. It's like putting salt on a wound. Granted, this isn't much better, but it's mostly water at this point. And it's still cold. That was room temperature, and that was a mistake. Like, I'm so used to drinking Diet Pepsi at room temperature that I forget that most sodas are made to be enjoyed cold. So, what's the, what's the uh, thing here? Well, the Lay's are indeed spicy. I wouldn't have them... 
I, I, I wouldn't have them unless you do actually have spicy and enjoy spicy food. That breakfast, that, that brisket breakfast burrito was really good, surprisingly. And, uh, the Point Break Punch was, meh. It's Hawaiian Punch layer. If you wanted Hawaiian Punch to, have to be fizzy, there you go. But, so what is happening to Come and Go? Like, okay, so, basically, they're retiring the brand this year. Uh, the people who bought them, Maverick, are changing all the name, the name of all their stores. So, well, made in Vietnam. Isn't that lovely? But, so, all the, you know, ah, yeah. all the, uh, stores are being rebranded, re and they're getting rid of their merch. So, so, goodbye, come and go. You came, and you went. Yeah. I don't think there's any other, like, funny stories from Come and Go. Oh. So, like, when I was in high school, we also always used to go there in the morning and get, uh, like, drinks. Like, my brother and sister would always get some ultra-sugary cappuccino. And I would usually get a little, a little personal mixture I invented where you... It's, I think it was equal parts Diet Mountain Dew and iced tea from the, uh, fr from the, from the, uh, fountain. And it had a, it almost tasted like beer, but, like, it was, it was weirdly refreshing. Yeah, I, I, I consider it my own version of, uh, oh, uh, what's that farmer's drink that was popular back in, like, the 1800s? Switchel. It, it, my own personal version of Switchel. Where, like, it, it had the caffeine from the dew, it had the refreshing uh, tea-ness, and they kind of played off each other in a weird way. One time, uh... This, was, this wasn't come and go, this was Casey's, but we went to Casey's and I got a 52-ounce drink. And... The time before that, I got, I got told to dump my drink by the uh, counselor because you're not allowed to have soda in class. So I get, so I'm walking past her in the in the hall with my 52 ounce cup, and I had just finished it. So I turn it over as I'm passing her, and she laughs. That was fun. Anyway, you all have a good one. This is Troy Smeller. I'm Audi.